Hello, 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 and welcome back to a very special episode of Project Drive. Uh, my name is Julian Stone, and we are going to be reviewing what is possibly one of the more legendary off-roading cars in history, and that is the Toyota Land Cruiser. Not just any Toyota Land Cruiser, this one is uh, nicknamed Greenpeace because he's done his duties as you can see he's a very she's a very very old girl but uh she still runs the farm like an absolute champion as like we're going to see down the drive that way we'll start here on this green runway i'm actually here out here in the shiva wilderness in limpopo so that's obviously very special in and of itself but we have a fully operational albeit uh fairly quirky Toyota land cruiser for you today so let's get started so as I mentioned, we are filming a Toyota Land Cruiser. This is an HJ45, which means it has the original H diesel engine. Let's start here with the H diesel engine. It's an inline six, 3.6 liter, makes about, uh, I think around 70 kilowatts or about 90, 95 horsepower, 95 PS. Um, and the torque number is 210 newton meters but obviously i'll get to that in the spec review you can see this one has obviously got a massive battery to power it let's have a look at that insanely big start motor down there if you guys can see that hopefully you can let me just brighten that up yeah so um yeah pretty special engine for pretty special car it is uh fuel injected however because this is a 76 uh so yeah that's a pretty interesting thing to note there now getting past the lovely uh, green patina on green piece here, we've got uh, 120 section by 116s, these are uh, Kumo variants but one thing I really wanted to mention is the classic steel wheel design that you've got on these old uh, F, uh, F body style uh, Land Cruisers, it's just iconic and then of course you've got your wheel lockers here if you want to go into four wheel drive, thankfully I don't think we'll be needing to do any of that today but um, obviously it is an option, it is a cruiser is it really a cruiser if it doesn't have four-wheel drive coming through we've got these lovely uh gridiron skid plates uh one thing to notice no, mention rather is you can see all this cracked uh none of this steel i don't think has been replaced uh only patched up and uh this is an original 76 all the way through pretty much only certain parts have been able to get replaced but i'll talk about that a little bit more on the drive you can see we've got the same design here and the same uh wheels and uh obviously leaf springs all around we're not running any uh interesting uh, coilovers just the standard old leaf springs i think you can get around 800 kilograms of load capacity that's what i was seeing online someone could definitely fact check me we've got some logs uh and yeah let me just tell you it's definitely going to be loud <laughs> it's definitely going to be very loud and of course your obligatory game spotlight over there coming to an interior review that's not going to take too long because there's not much here it's all bare very farm spec very very much this generation Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, so obviously we've got a mirrored uh, kick plate over here, which I'm gonna use to get in. We've got uh, very nice game styled uh, bench seats. Uh, this one I think can fold through in that one as well. So let me just get in here. We have got the most glorious thin rimmed uh, plastics around steering wheel uh, with uh, hooter buttons flanked here and there, which is fantastic. And then of course we've got our rubber stopper here. Um, so one other thing to mention is we've got a really, really optimistic speedo. I really think this thing could maybe get to a hundred, just over a hundred if you really pushed it, but you got all your necessary temperature gauges. Of course, some of those are not going to be working after around 40 years of use, but actually even more now, <laughs> more like 45 and all the rest of it. Uh, but, uh, we've got an alternated light over there. Not something you see every day. And of course, a manual choke that's right we do have a manual choke vehicle here today which is also very special we've got our sorry get the mounts out of the way we've got our diesel ignition if i push that in that means the car's ready to go but we are not ready to drive yet so let me just pull that out and then of course you've got your windscreen wipers over here you've got your four on the floor over here which is obviously very special so let me clutch in and just push that forward it is very loose very old but very special nonetheless got some floor mats got the rest of the bench seats you've got your little cubby hole here for all the different paraphernalia you might want and of course obligatory osha handle that feels very very sturdy and uh, otherwise i think we've got an ashtray over here although it won't open so i don't know anyway regardless i think that's pretty much oh and of course your low ranged gearbox which we're also not going to have to use uh this is also to engage four wheel drive but we are not going to need to use it uh also in fear of me having to get a tetanus shot after wrangling this thing into submission okay you now join me inside the cruiser 
Uh, so I'm gonna, gonna run through the spec review as always. We didn't, uh, well I say we didn't, I didn't manage to find much on it to be honest because there are so many different variations of these Bucky style HJ45 uh, models. So they don't give you exact an, an exact spec list so this is pretty much what I'm going off of. Obviously I couldn't really get an average mileage, these vehicles are so old it wouldn't really be uh, right especially to do it dirty by saying it's got shite fuel economy because we all know it probably does. So I reckon the top speed of one of these things especially in this current condition the engine is mint uh really it just i mean do these engines ever really go bad but uh anyway that's more for the drive let me not get carried away i reckon you can go about 100 k's an hour in one of these so the 0 to 60 is kind of like not well not to 100 k's an hour anyway it's kind of like you know the top speed which I find hilarious. It's a 3.6 uh, liter engine. I'm pretty sure it is push rod. I don't see any cams in sight, except of course down below. Uh, and it is obviously an inline six diesel uh, VH engine, as I mentioned before, which is a really special um, little, little engine. So we've got a four speed manual, which is actually right in front of me. My first, if I just drop it a bit, is right here. I love the fact that it's a four on the floor. As I said, 70 kilowatts, uh, which is 93 horsepower, 95 PS at 3,600 RPM. So really low rev not that we have a tachometer to see but uh, also maximum torque is coming in at 216 uh, newton meters at 2200 rpm uh, i said the ground clearance i really couldn't find an exact figure i said plenty <laughs> you got plenty to get over all these humps and bumps so we're going to go over a few of them now uh, in the drive and then the wheelbase i think on these hj45s from what i could see is about 2.2 meters although i don't think so well it's a it's close anyway it's 90 inches but anyway you're going to join me for the drive uh it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be very noisy hopefully you can hear me all righty cheers okay you now join me for the push start drive just that's it Woo! let's get that in a second ah oh, there we go now we're just going to take a little trip down the runway i sincerely hope you guys can hear me um because <laughs> i really only get one shot at this you're going to get a very shaky camera i don't have a gimbal this is what we've got. You're basically just gonna get a lot of anecdotal shouting and uh, hopefully some experience from this, but it is, yeah, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be stable. So let's start with the engine. It's great. Step on it. Honestly, not fantastic. I'm gonna slow down a little bit now and actually maybe turn around. Uh, yo, I'll tell you what, it is hard work when you are driving this car. It is very, very hard work. So I'm gonna drive a little bit slower so you guys can actually maybe see me a little bit better. Oh, and of course we don't have power steering. So this big ass steering wheel is very, very necessary. Okay. It's just going to be more about me talking and less about the actual uh, video experience. But uh, hopefully you can see the remnants of the sun on my face and uh, the smile on my face because that's what this car is. It's a smile machine. We're in second gear now, still high range, but engine got plenty of work. Unbelievable. Going to third. Poke from down low. That's that push right poke that everybody loves. I'm going to slow it down one more time now because ultimately this is a car probably best enjoyed slow going over the terrain and the farm. So the power steering is quite loose and vague after 40 years, uh, as you might expect, but, uh, but nothing really too drastic or too bad. It's just kind of, you know, you gotta really mad handle this car and that's a lot of the things. The gearbox is loose, but you gotta really know where you, you're placing it because ultimately the, those wheels are quite big. They're nice and thin, but they are quite big. Okay. So, what else? <laughs> what else to tell you about this thing? Um, the You can certainly feel that torque, like I talked about in the engine, it's fantastic. The gearbox itself, once you get used to it, is not bad. Four speeds is actually plenty because the ratios are so short, uh, so that's all right. Uh, I want to talk more about why people really love these cars. And then, absolutely love them because, well, first of all, it's a freaking Toyota Land Cruiser. I mean, these things are everywhere in South Africa <coughs> and worldwide. I made a name for themselves in places like this, places where, you know, it's not a guarantee that you're going to make it out of this if you, if you don't have a really good uh, cell phone reception or you got one of these where you, can, you don't have to get helicopter lifted out of somewhere because they're just indestructible. 
as I said, everything else on this car is kind of, you know, worn through. But this engine, Pete was telling me, has never been taken apart. Never. Never ever been taken apart. It is unbelievable. It's never been opened. So that tells me <laughs> this is a proper, proper cruiser. And that's all you really need to know, in my opinion. <laughs> it is just that simple. Um, regardless of uh, that and the ownership experience, he's only had a problem replacing the starter motor. And what else has happened is I'm going up a hill now. So he said I might experience some fueling issues. If I had to uh, replace the a diesel feed line with something the engineer at Louis Trichard managed to uh, fix him up. <laughs> So I might experience some fueling issues, but otherwise, I mean, the thing just goes. I'm gonna go up a little hill here. Oh. Oh. Magic, just magic. Stick in second gear the whole time. You don't need to go to first. Well, this is why I drive cars. I love to experience the rawness. I love the feeling, I love the mechanical aspect of it. These things are going so high up in value these days, you know? can absolutely never be sure how, how high they're gonna go this one might not sell for all that much just because of its condition but the simple fact of the matter is I'm just taking my, uh, my bearing here hold on a moment oh can I get it into first can I will I that's a good question Come on, there we go. <laughs> the bushings are totally gone in this car. So trying to find first. Finding second is a lot easier. You just kind of let it sit in the gear in the gear there. I mean that's this car, right? It's just it's a it's a 70s bruiser. Uh, and that's what it's really all about. And it just does it with such ease. I guess that's where I get to um, end off here is because we are coming to the end of the trail uh, and we're coming to the end of uh, the drive. Um, what I wanted to really mention is do you do you consider something like this over maybe something like um, like a land like a Land Rover Defender right because you got the aluminium body it doesn't rust as easy then you're also dealing with Land Rover reliability for me personally I haven't driven the Defender that's for a future video uh, and it's definitely something I want to uh, try out uh, and uh, of course I know my Land Rover video is definitely the most successful so we'll see how this does but uh, I've got a feeling uh, people are going to be pretty happy about uh, the fact that I drove an original cruiser, a freaking not an FJ but an H, an HJ nonetheless, um, and not with the uh, the big inline six, but certainly a cool diesel inline six an H engine. And uh, yeah, I've just been really chuffed and really blessed to be able to do uh, stuff like this and uh, share it on YouTube. So yeah, it's been an awesome day for me. I think if you have one of these, hold on to them, look after them, and if you want to sell them for loads, have them redone. I know they're just their they're smile machine. I'll see you guys for the next video. Uh, thanks for being so patient, but I hope the wait was worth it. And uh, yeah, cheers. See you next time.